In this session, we'll look at introduction to bonds, and uh, which will be important for module two and module three. And uh, to investors, bonds are a form of investment. Uh, to companies, they can issue bonds at a, as a form of borrowing. So in this session, we'll look at three types of bonds. The first would be a plain vanilla bond, or what we call a fixed rate bond. The second type would be a zero coupon bond. And the third type is a floating rate note. Now, for the first type, it's a plain vanilla bond that pays fixed coupons, or what we call fixed amounts. And this fixed coupon is calculated against the face value over a period of years. Now, looking at this timeline here, the bar represents the cash flows and the horizontal axis represents time. And you will see that in this case, the bars have the same height, which means that the coupon is a fixed amount. So how do you calculate this coupon amount? So the coupon would be the coupon rate, which is in percentage, multiplied by the face value. And in most cases, when the bond is issued, the coupon rate and face value will be fixed up front. Now, at the maturity of the bond, which is in period N, there will be a payment of the face value. This is the final payment. We also call this the par value. Okay. So that will be the final payment. Now, with the cash flows across this period, then the next part would be how much an investor would actually pay to buy this bond. So the amount will be paid at time zero, which is today. Okay, this is de depicted as a negative uh, cash flow. That's why the bar is uh, on the neck on the at the bottom of the horizontal axis. So the price here, okay, uh, which is based on market price, okay, uh, is also equals to the present value of the coupons and the face value. So we will uh, we will discuss about how we calculate the value of the market value of the bond in class. But for now, just focus on how the cash flows uh, of these bonds are plotted. Now, the next part is let's put some numbers in. So there are three types of uh, bond classifications depending on the price uh, versus the face value. So first off, if the bond price is the same as the face value, which in this case is uh, the face value is $100, and the price is also $100, the negative represents a negative cash flow. So the bond here is called a par bond. Now, for the next case, if the bond price is greater than the face value, which means that the investor will actually pay more for it, then the bond is called a premium bond. And the last case, if the bond price is less than the face value, the bond is called a discount bond. Now let's look at example 1A from the investor's perspective. This bond will have a face value of $100,000 with a coupon rate of 5% per annum for a fixed rate bond. The payment frequency is annually and the tenor is three years, which means that this bond will mature in three years time, paying 5% per annum. And this 5% is based on the face value of the bond. Now, the investor purchased the bond for 98000 realizing a yield to maturity of 5.74% per annum. So, this assumes that if the investor pays $98,000 for this bond and holds it until maturity, receiving the coupons along the way with the face value, the expected return should be 5.74% per annum. Now, how do you get the $5,000 here? So we'll take 5%, which is the coupon rate, multiplied by the face value, $100,000. So that's $5,000 per year. Now, this $98,000 shown as a negative sign, this is the amount paid by the investor. That's a cash outflow. And the $100,000 here is a payment of the face value, or what we call the par value, or some people call it principal. Now, in the next slide, we'll look at it from the, uh, from the issuer's perspective. Now, before we move on from the investor's perspective, this, is an, uh, this bond is an asset to the investor. It is a form of an investment where you will pay. Uh, there's a cash outflow at the beginning, and then there'll be cash inflows or the returns uh, after that. Now, from the 
issuer's perspective, this would be a liability, which means that the issuer will issue the bond and sell it to investors, okay, and then you will use the money as a form of uh, uh, to fund your project. So again, with the same details, the face value is 100,000, coupon rate is 5%, payment frequency is annually, tenor is 3 years, but this time when the company issues it, they issue it for $98,000, okay, and this time, uh, the 5.74% is called a cost of debt to the comp to the issuer. Now showing the timeline, this is how it will look like. So when the issuer issues the bond, it will be for 98,000, this is what the issuer receives, and they will use it to fund their projects or their working capital. And then subsequently they will uh, pay $5,000 coupon every year. Okay, and at the end of year three, uh, the issuer will pay that find the face value of one hundred thousand dollars to the uh, investors. So this is the coupon payments. This is the proceeds received by the company, and this is the payment of face value, or what we call the par value or principal. So in fact, if you look at example one A and one B, uh, the cash flows are just from different perspective. Okay, to the investor who paid for the bond, it's an asset. Okay, they get a return for buy, uh, buying the bond. For the issuer, they borrow money up front and then they will have to pay it back later on. So to the investor, what is known as the yield to maturity is a return, but to the issuer, uh, it's a cost. Now, uh, on to the next example, we'll look at what we call zero coupon bonds. So as the name uh, is given, there's no coupon paid, okay, during the life of the bond. So it involves no coupon payment, and uh, at the maturity of the bond, only the face value will be paid. Now in this case, since there's no coupon paid in the interim, therefore the bond's price will normally be at a huge discount to the face value. So this is the timeline of this zero coupon bond, okay, uh, the investor will pay a certain sum, which is normally lower than the par value of the bond or the face value, and then at maturity, the face value will be paid back to the investor. And notice that there are no coupons during the life of the bond. Now in the last part, let's look at floating rate notes or what we call uh, FRN in short. Now this is a bit different from fixed rate bonds because uh, the coupons will not be fixed. So an FRA involves payments of a variable amount, or what we call, again, the coupon, against the face value over a period of years. And the coupon payment will be benchmarked to a reference rate, or what we call a benchmark rate. And in Australia, we call it the bank bill swap rate, BBSW. Now, in terms of the timeline, the cash flows will be shown as this. And you will note that the blue bars here Okay, they now do not have the same vertical height as what we saw in uh, the plain vanilla bond. And this tells us that the coupon will vary from period to period. Now, again, coming back to the context of uh, CPA Australia. So in Australia, banks use floating rate notes or FRNs to raise funds and also lend funds to their corporate borrowers at a margin above their funding rate. And of course, the, the funding rate here would be the BBSW. Okay, or what we call the bank bill swap rate. Now, FRNs uh, tend to have an advantage over the fixed rate bonds when interest rates are volatile. Okay, uh, so as investors are normally not willing to hold long-term fixed rate bonds when interest rates are volatile. Uh, as we'll see later, for fixed rate bonds and those longer-term ones, their market value will be very sensitive Okay, when interest rates are volatile, which could lead to very high profits or maybe very high losses, which investors tend to be very uncomfortable with. Now, looking at how the structure goes, so we will have the capital market where the bank borrows money, gets funding from. Okay, then uh, of course the bank will then deal with the corporation, which uh, they lend money to. And let's assume that the bank has a margin of 1%. Okay, they need to make a profit of 1% uh, when they, uh, let's say, loan money to the corporation. Now, first off, where do banks get funding from? Of course, they could get funding from deposits, from the retail customers. Okay, but in relation to the capital market, 
the bank uh, will normally get funding uh, in the form of wholesale deposits. So let's assume that the bank borrows money from the capital market at a floating rate at DBSW plus 0.5%. Okay, let's, let's assume that this is the cost of funding to the bank. And now when the corporation uh, goes to the bank and says they want to borrow money, the bank will have to loan that amount. Okay, so they will need to uh, make sure that they make a profit of 1% on the loan that they uh, give out to the corporation. And the cost of funds is BBSW plus 0.5%. So at what rate would the bank lend money to the corporation? So that would be BBSW plus 0.5% plus 1%. So the spread here or the margin will be 1.5%. Now, of course, in return for that, the bank will receive interest from the corporation every period at the rate of BBSW plus 1.5%. And the bank will then pay back the interest to the capital market at BBSW plus 0.5%. So from this transaction, the profit to the bank, okay, is called is 1%. So that's how uh, the FRN would work. Now let's look at the at uh, the cash flow. Now, uh, so how FRNs work uh, from the issuer's perspective. Now again, uh, we'll use these few exa uh, numbers as examples. So the face value will be one hundred thousand dollars. The coupon rate will be BBSW plus 1%. The payment frequency is annually. Tenor is 3 years and is issued for $98,000. So at the first off, uh, before we put in the coupons, let's just uh, see the, uh, the uh, cash flows, the price and the face value. So the issuer will issue the FRN for $98,000. Okay, we'll talk about the calculations uh, in class. But the issuer will get this funding. 98, of 98,000. So the proceeds will be used to fund either working capital or capital expenditures. And then, of course, at the end of year three, when the FRN matures, the issuer will pay back the face value of 100,000. So now the question is, what about the coupons? Now, let's... So what happens here is that when the FRN is issued, okay, the issuer will be notified of the BBSW prevailing at time zero. Okay, so since the uh, coupon is paid annually, so the benchmark rate here would be the one year BBSW. Now let's assume that at time zero, the one year BBSW is 3.5%. So the rate will be fixed at time t equals to zero but the payment will only be made in year one. So the convention here for interest rate fixing is that interest rate will always be fixed in advance, but the payment will be in arrears. Now, with that, the coupon rate one year for payment one year later will be the BBSW plus the spread of 1%, so that will be 4.5%. Now using that, we will calculate the coupon. So the coupon will be the coupon rate 4.5% multiplied by 100,000. So that would be 4,500. So this is how much the issuer will have to pay the investors one year from now. Now let's move on. Now let's move uh, let's move forward to one year to t equals to one. So one year has passed. Okay, then the issuer will make the payment of 4,500 to the investors. And upon making the payment, the BBSW will be reset. So the issuer finds out that one year from now, okay, after, uh, upon making the payment, the one year BBSW is now 3.7%. So again, the rate is fixed in advance, but the payment will be made in the next, in the following, uh, in the next year, which is year two. So in year two, the coupon rate will now be 3.7% plus 1%, which is 4.7%. So what's the coupon in, uh, in dollar term? So that will be 4.7% multiplied by 100,000, so that the issuer will have to pay $4,700 next year in year two. Okay, so you will see that in this case, 
the issuer will have to pay more compared to the first year. So there's a higher interest expense, and of course, uh, the profits will be lower compared, I mean, uh, by $200 before tax. Now, moving on to the last remaining year, year three. Now, let's say upon making the payment uh, in year two, the issuer is informed that the BBSW has been reset to 3%, which is lower than year two and year one. So what's the coupon rate for year three? So that would be 3% plus 1%. Okay, that would be 4%. So the issuer will have to pay a coupon of 4% multiplied by the face value of 100000 So that's $4,000. So that's how much the issuer has to pay. Now, uh, on one hand, uh, there, is a, there is a threat where the issuer may have to pay more interest expense, but there's also an opportunity where the issuer may pay less interest expense. Uh, interest. So these are the, this is the advantage and also the disadvantage of using an FRN uh, to get funding. Now, of course, at the end of year three, there will also be the payment of the face value. And after, upon payment, the BBSW, the one year BBSW at that point is 3.3%. Now, however, this would be irrelevant because uh, the bond, the FRN has already matured and there is no subsequent payments, therefore uh, the interest rate here would not be relevant unless, unless uh, the issuer plans to refinance or extend the FRN further. Right, so that's, that's the end of the session. Uh, so through this, uh, you should at least understand uh, how bonds work in terms of uh, how the coupons are like, okay, uh, when, where does the face value happen. Okay, and then we also saw three types of bonds, fixed rate bonds, uh, zero coupon bonds, as well as uh, floating rate note. Okay, so we're in, in the class, uh, we will discuss further on how uh, the price is calculated, okay, given the yield to maturity or the cost of debt.